Imagine waking up to the sounds of the farm, covered in iconic Humboldt fog. As you step outside to harvest your own fruit and veggies for an authentic farm-to-table experience, gathering with your friends for a mouth-watering meal against the backdrop of a beautiful cannabis farm. To me, it's the epitome of a perfect morning and quite honestly, what I would consider to be a perfect day. So I'm so thrilled you're joining me for this episode. So you too can experience this along with me. It's the first of its kind in California. It's a bud and breakfast nestled within a historic Victorian farmhouse. Here you can literally wake up to the scent of cannabis in the air. And if so inclined, you can even brush your teeth with it. Besides some fabulous cuisine, I'll introduce you to Brian Robinson, an innovative grower with an old fashioned retreat, immersing guests in the world of cannabis cultivation. Joining us on this extraordinary day is Michael, a dear friend of mine from Royal Gold Soils. Together, we'll unravel the secrets behind Humboldt's unrivaled microclimate and explore the passion and dedication required to thrive in today's competitive cannabis market. We'll also visit Royal Gold headquarters, providing an exclusive tour of the creation of an OMRI certified dry fertilizer called Crown Jewel. Concluding our journey in a greenhouse where the legendary reggae artist, Don Carlos, cultivates his own signature cannabis strains. We are the first licensed bun and breakfast in the state of California and probably the first one that is actually located on a cannabis farm licensed in the United States. You can experience everything that has to do with cannabis from start to finish, seed to sale, smoking, enjoying, and just the whole culture that is the area where we grow it so you can experience what we experience daily. And we offer all the different things from tours um, to masseuses that come in and offer CBD massages, sunrise yoga for our guests as well. Um, and then there's a, quite a few local delivery services as well that can bring product for um, our guests to try, you know, legal product. We, you know, of course, would like them to buy ours from the dispensary and try that, but anything that they want to try from Humboldt, we really want them to experience Humboldt, you know, to the fullest extent. And this is immersing yourself in the Humboldt culture. You're literally living in it, you're staying in it. Farm to table, everything. We, that's really what we want people to experience is that, you know, the back to the land movement and what we've been a part of and the whole culture that's meshed together from the indoors to the depth to everything else and just, everybody trying to create the best product possible. I think it's more of an art form and Humboldt really is on the forefront of this. So yeah. we really want to show people that this is where it's at and this is, you know, this is the place. The microclimate here, you cannot beat it. I've grown all up and down the coast of California. I was born and raised in Long Beach and started growing in warehouses and worked my way up in that kind of form. And you cannot get a better setup here. We don't have to recycle air. We don't have to use air conditioners. And that's the biggest thing. I really think you lose a lot from not having fresh air. Really? So when you really start looking at like parts per million and the cleanliness of the air and what we have, we probably have the cleanest air in the world, I think, other than Fiji. All of our facilities are right on the valley with ocean breeze. So if you look at a map, all of our facilities are placed exactly in the exact same spot. So during the middle of the day in the summer, the outside air is probably around 65 degrees. It's like running an air conditioner, but we run it with fans. So it's just positive pressure, pull air through, constant. And we found that that with lights, with really specific nutrients for the plants and certain crop steering techniques, that is the best product that we can produce, even better than what we were doing in our indoors. Yeah, it's not by chance that Humboldt is uh, the mecca for cultivating cannabis. Uh, there, this is the environment that the plant likes to grow in. There's so many things about it too that fascinate me. Like you're saying the ocean air, like the positive ions coming off of the crashing ocean waves and blowing right up. Like yeah. all of those things play a role and they're so subtle, but they all come together to create this. And like, I love so much about this bud and breakfast, Brian, is like the history. You come here and you feel like you're at home. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, an amazing space. The vibes here are awesome. This house was built in 1904, so it's a, a Victorian that was built in the early, you know, turn of the century. The original settler that built the house, the property used to go all the way to the freeway, which acres and acres. 
and then through the years they've you know subdivided the properties but it's a pretty historic place it's really neat to you know offer it to people and let them be here before and we, we have a lot of people that have come locals too um, and they'll this used to have a pumpkin patch and a corn maze and they used to come here as kids and just everything about this place is just good vibes and mm -hmm. you know everybody really has a good time it's and a good real, memories real amazing property how has Humboldt County been in respect to adopting cannabis and making bun and breakfasts a possibility? It, with, without the, the help of the county and the jurisdictions here and the, the ordinances that they've created, we wouldn't have been able to do any of the things that we've done. So they've really been key in helping us. Um, they've asked for our input. They've asked for the community's input. They've been available to us at every level from county to city. We've talked directly with people. It's, it's wonderful, I gotta say. Um, everybody has a voice here in Humboldt County. Even people who aren't so much for it, they still have a voice. They can still say what they need to say and the community listens and everybody comes together and we have compromises and we figure out the best way to move forward and to make it good for everybody and I think that's important. I think that's the way forward with anything, isn't it? It's a blessing to be here for those reasons and there's nowhere else in the world that you have, you know, all sorts of really cool cannabis tourism. I think it's really the cutting edge of where it's gonna go. And we'll create more too. You know, and people have always asked, well, what if so-and-so opens a bed and breakfast down the way? I'm like, thank Perfect. you, please, because yeah. then more people are going to want to come there. And then if he sells out, then I'll get overflow. I sell, he gets overflow. All that re requires is yeah. more and more people knowing that we're here and that we have this offer for people. If people don't know you can come here and do this, then you're not gonna do it. It's like when totally. my wife goes shopping, she wants to go 10 stores that are right by each other, not one, you know? So I keep trying to explain to people, the more we have, the more we can offer, people will come here, you know? When I started this over 10 years ago, I was growing it and harvesting it. But nobody was really talking about what was going on inside this plant. Outside, you'll see plant material, which is primarily carbon and water. And it's only after a closer look you discover this beautiful world of trichomes. And it's here that you find the substance which gives cannabis the effect that it has. Now that I know it's all about trichome production, I use resin. Try it, you're gonna be blown away. How has legalization been for you guys? Roller coaster. Yeah. It's been tough. Um, it's been tough on my marriage. It's been tough on my family. I have two small kids. I started this when my my first was like a one year old and my wife was pregnant. Mm. So it was a big decision to get out of the illicit market and work my way into this and put everything I had into this. Um, you know, it was tough, but it's like anything. When we grew up on the hill, the people who would hold note or the property owners, they'd always say, yeah, I'll, whatever, you guys, 70% of you don't make it anyway. They would, you know, lease out properties or hold note on properties yeah. and people would default and they'd sell them three, four times. These guys made a ton of money doing that too. Huh. And when we came in, we did well. We were like, okay, where's your next property? What else do you have? And we would start doing well. And I think that that has the same kind of thing to do with the legal industry too. You're only gonna have that 20% from the people once it got a lot easier to do mm -hmm. that aren't gonna make it, you know? And I think that that's where community needs to come together and make sure that people are sharing the blueprints and the recipes and the things that are gonna make them successful at the certain scale that they're at because it's all I different totally, depending I totally on scale. Agree. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I just, I feel blessed just to still be able to work with the plant every day and have that be my main thing. And, right. you know, had to have a, a window of opportunity into the legal market too. It was really hard if you're not, you know, full of money or a corporate or lobbying or, you know, giving money to supervisors or council members and all these other things. And here in Humboldt, that wasn't a part of the game at all. They've, uh, you know, you can reach out to supervisors. They want to help us. They really? Oh, it's unreal. It, we have the support. We have support of the community members. So important, um, right? Like that's... It's, it's made our life a lot easier because especially bringing my wife into this, she's not from the counterculture as much. You know, she's a personal chef and things like that. So coming into this whole thing was a little 
you know, shocking. So she came from her. a personal chef. Yeah, so she was a personal chef. She did that in people's houses, and then also she was on or Orange County Housewives and the Shaws yeah. of Sunset, and so like, cool. Yeah, she would do kind of high-end personal chefing mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, and then so now we've kind of incorporated that into this and moving her up here, I was really excited about this too because it gave her something to do as well because she's not really, you know, she's not a farmer and, you know, doesn't, hasn't really gotten into that a whole lot. And so it, it, it's been really nice to have her. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Wow. So I did a waffles with blackberry sauce and the lemon whipped cream. And I did a sweet potato crusted quiche with bell pepper, green onion, cheddar, and basil and a little thyme, and bacon and sausage and grapes. Wow. Sure this is legit. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. It's amazing. So awesome. beautiful. This is the first cannabis leaf waffle I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Ditto. So give us a brief idea of what we're going to see today. A lot of weed. That's <laughs> perfect. That's, we're going to show you the technology and what we've really tried to create to take the indoor growing and put it into a more efficient energy cost savings, you know, producing environment that's a lot better on the environment and just kind of the style that we use because I think it's it's neat to kind of let everybody see that there's a couple different styles of things. So we'll show some of that stuff that we're doing and just Amazing. all the fun stuff that I get to do every day. Amazing, a life in the day of Brian. <laughs> So this facility is at the point to where we're gonna be harvesting in the next couple of weeks. You'll see the, the nice development of the flowers. At this point, they're just so pretty. Um, it's a really good time to see these. We're constantly at all different points of the growing cycle, not only to cut it up for ourselves and doing the work, but also to make sure that we're not inundated on the distribution side yeah. with processing and getting it out to market. So that way, as soon as something's ready for market, we get it to the consumer as fresh as possible. We were grandfathered in and didn't have to do it, but after, the community and the neighbors had such an issue with it, we decided to install it. So what exactly is this? So it's a liquid that attaches the particles to the terpenes of the cannabis, and it stops the smell from traveling from here. So it basically knocks down all that smell from the emitters here, so it fogs it all out. It looks like a lot more water than it is. It's very, very fine, and it really does work well in overpowering oh. it. So it's actually dosatron, which typically is used for irrigation. Yeah you're able to actually find another use for it. That's really cool. Yeah, and it doesn't have any power or anything like that too, which is nice, so if that goes down, but. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of airflow, that's a lot of fog. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, you can see how this one grows quite different. The different roundness, flower sites. Also automatic watering system. That's really been a huge part of the crop steering process is being able to water little bits a lot and get the nutrients in the EC levels to where we need them to be. Perfect. Tracking and making sure EC, moisture, pH, all the way around is really important to any growing environment. So we've yeah. taken advantage of that. This computer here can control everything in the greenhouse. We really have to take into consideration what we've got going on outside. Like I was saying, the intensity of the sun, the temperature, the moisture of the air. So we track all of that right here. Just right now, the sun peaked and it started to get to where it's coming down, but you see that's why all the lights are off. The day before that, very similar until the end of the day, it got cloudy and you can see there. So that's where we would use artificial lighting. A day like this where it was cloudy all day, also very wet outside. So we'll use those lights to really help dry everything out, make sure we take advantage of that. So that's how we track the outside. Then on the inside, we watch our humidity and our temperature very closely. Dialing these in it, it has been, you know, part of it as well. And we've had some help with some of the people that we work with, small boutique farms and Royal Gold and a couple other people. And putting this together and getting to this point now, we're, we're really confident that we've dialed these things. Just the more education that we can give all of our workers and we can learn ourselves every day we learn. And we're dancing with these plants. So it's a different partner every time and we adjust. So it's been fun. So you're also running 315 ceramic metal highlight? So that's one thing special about this facility as well. We have a mixture of licenses and it was really important for me to focus on this one. This is a type one mixed light. So it's only allowed six watts per square foot. 
The other licenses are allowed 25 watts per square foot. So it's a huge difference in the amount of, you know, in the environmental impact and everything else. So 315s, and then also there's a line of LEDs. When I harvest this, I have half of the room one strain fed exactly the same under the exact same conditions and then I'll have that one row of LEDs and I'll take that separate and then at the end when I weigh out that row and I have all the stuff I'll be testing on it as well and if testing's better grams per square foot is better then I actually have that in the California metric system too showing what these lights can actually do or can't do yeah so that's one thing we're doing here in the six watts per square foot room. And then also we have a mixture of those in our type two licenses. Okay. That's over the six watts, but way under the 26, more like nine to 10 watts per square foot. And we're gonna try and figure out what the difference is in that. And if it's not worth it, we'll probably gear more towards type one licenses going forward. More uh, energy efficient. Especially when you're exhausting a lot like yeah. no matter how way you put it this room has to exhaust a lot because that is the cooling we have wet walls that yeah. we have so that way when it gets the air outside might get too hot the wet wall will cool it down if it's hot enough for me to have to use that the humidity inside this greenhouse from the microwave type deal going on it gets down to 30 percent 25 percent so that wet wall yeah. at that point it's perfect I yeah. don't even have to plug in a humidifying section to any of my programming because it's already going to happen if it gets it too It drops hot. the temperature. You know, a wet wall is ultimately just evaporation cooling, and uh, it, it'll drop this room down by 10, 15 degrees. Yeah. Just naturally, but it, what it also comes with, which is a good or bad thing, depending on how you want to deal with it, it comes with a lot of moisture and humidity. Yes. Which is and can be a very, really, really good thing, and in this case, that's the only time we need it, yeah. And then we also make sure that the water that we run through there is ozone treated as well. Yep. So we're not gonna worry about any biofilm or any other so organisms. Important. I don't think people realize how much contamination from the air and you know mold spores and different things can culture in those. So we're yep. really particular about that as well. Everything that we have right now is in native soil. Yep. So we feed the least amount possible and just basically use the natural lifting of where we are too in consideration to the rest of the terrain. Yep. So that way everything has time to basically work like a leach field. Okay, and the plant can actually go get those nutrients if it needs be. Correct, yep. Everything here Amazing. has all of that available to it 100%. Okay, a little wow. reds, a little bit of blues. It's really impressive how much it really does change the spectrum when the lights go on. Big time, right? It really kind of levels it out. It makes it feel more like a flowering room. With these lights, you really feel that change, that red pop out and like, that you can see the surface color change in perception it a little bit darker. It looks a lot darker. more like an indoor grow. It really does. So they made these, the purple is UV. So yeah. we had the UV added and then the spectrum was made to really get the far red that really helps the plants for the UV spectrum. The biggest thing that these ones have that the other ones don't have is the optics. So they have a 3D printing machine that does the optics on these, so it works like a magnifying glass. Okay. Our biggest problem with LEDs is having to constantly have them on the canopy and raise and lower them yep. in this kind of setup. When we work with the HIDs, it almost seems like the HID from this row is giving more penetration to the vertical flower sites that we have here. And we're finding with LED, it's a little different. You get it right on top, you shorten that plant, you get more flower sites, and you might not get it one big one, but you get some nice, really good sized quality flowers. Yeah. So we're trying to find a nice mixture of that. Trying to do a blend of both. And, and, and quite frankly, having the HPS lights, especially off season, is a nice way of getting more heat in the space. I was just gonna say that. We oh, really need the heat. Whenever we did our indoors, the worst time was right when you shut off the light, that yeah. humidity spike, all that stuff. Same thing in this room because the tarps close and it shuts off just like an indoor. So I like to use the air around four o'clock, five o'clock when that sun's still out. It's got that nice dry air. I'm not fighting that sunset off, you know, air. And then by the time that starts happening, my heaters are already kicking on and doing their thing. So yeah. we've, it's taken us a couple of years to really find the best way to work these. Yeah, like you can even feel that heat on that nice top layer. Like right away, you feel a little bit of warmth. You know, yeah. that's important, you know, and I, 
We actually get in and do this when we when we'll strip these up. We'll grub this dirt a little bit. And that's one thing with the drip tape. You have to keep it a little wetter. We found that too. So that way, as everything goes, you don't end up with a corrugated wet spot here that just goes down like this. It evenly keeps it out. And that keeps that EC up like I kept talking about. And yeah. that's what really kept them fed. You know, we don't want them sticking straight up, but I want them happy. And you yeah. can tell these are fed real nice, right yeah. at that point, not too much, not too little. They're all super healthy. And I think that that transfers into taste. That's a big thing, like hey, making sure things are right. And if you don't have airflow and cleanliness and biodiversity going off in here, like where there will be some mushrooms going off. I mean, it's that's the good stuff. Like that's what we want. If we don't have things kicking off and happening, something's wrong. Like that's why we really like Royal Gold's product as well. Fortunate to have the guru of soil in the house. Michael, can you uh, get into what we're growing in, what we're fertilizing with? So these are mostly King's Mix bed. I know Brian uses yep. a wide variety of our products for all his different applications. Uh, he yep. uses a lot of tuper for his container grows because he's irrigating more directly. It doesn't have the problems with coning and things like that. Yep. But I believe this is King's Mix. And Brian, you know, he wasn't a Royal Gold user. We talked to him and he's like, why should I use your soil? And we're like, well, you should try a side by side and see if you should use it. And he went through all of these rigorous research and data collection points like he's doing constantly and came back and he's like, yeah, it's working. And a part of that is because of his systems and what he's doing, the way he's using dry organic amendments. He's using our Crown Jewels products. He's also using products from Soilscape Solutions and other local businesses that really help advise, you know, basically crop consulting and understanding what's going into the soil. Renowned for premium cannabis soils, Royal Gold has now expanded into producing a dry fertilizer line, the Crown Jewel. During my time at Humboldt, I toured the Royal Gold headquarters with the Crown Jeweler himself, Dutch. And I'm gonna show you that right after this quick break. Hey there, growers. Are you struggling with mineral deposits in your drip irrigation? Let me introduce you to Clearline by Current Culture H2O. It keeps your irrigation lines and emitters free from mineral buildup. Expect predictable results, enhance your water quality, and get that nutrient solution just right for plant uptake. This system is safe to use, non-corrosive, and cost-effective. Why spend more on repairs and replacements? Boost your crop consistency with ClearLine. Your plants and wallet will thank you. You can trial ClearLine irrigation for free Today, only at growworld.com. Visit the link below. So this is a new animal right here. So this used to be all of our amendment storage, and now it is our crown jewels and amendment manufacturing. This has been my baby. This is something I've wanted to develop for a long time. And we finally got over the hump of five years of research and development, really honing the ingredients list to make sure that every box is checked all the way down through the micros. We do encourage people to know their grow, know their genetics. You're dumping pounds and pounds of extra phosphorus on that it never needed. You're wasting money yeah. and you're cutting your bottom line dollar yield in the end. Yeah. So we're really trying to help facilitate these thought processes for farmers that haven't really looked at it. Lovely. So yeah. take us through the process. Let's have a look. So here you have our crown jeweler, Dutch. You know, Dutch has been a long time, kind of an icon in our community here. Okay. He's worked at all sorts of different breweries, a lot of grow stores, manufacturing. He's been, you know, all the way going back to American hydroponics days. Holy sure. crap, that's going even way Berkeley back. Even Berkeley Indoor Garden Center. That's yeah. even going farther. That was the first. 90s. We're super blessed to have him on the team, quality controlling, orchestrating all of the Crown Jewels project. It's been a huge blessing to have somebody that has the eye for quality and the understanding. It's yeah. just a huge benefit. So Dutch, can you kind of take us through the process? Yeah, let's walk through it, man. Let me, uh, let me give you an idea of kind of what we're doing here. Yeah. So we produce a grow and a bloom. So I try to keep all the inventory up to speed. So when we're, we do do a production run, we have all the materials in place. We have to weigh certain inputs. Obviously there's different amounts being used in different for each formula. And we try to formulate the recipes to make it as simple and as quick as we can. We put it into our hopper here. 
And this has an agitator, which will mix the materials prior to being sent up the auger. This is the main guts of it. Material drops down out of here, comes into the pin mill. The pin mill rotates at 3,650 RPM. It's fast. And there are 120 teeth in there about the size of your finger, and they're spaced about a quarter inch apart. So anything that goes in there it's gets blended, pulverized. It's pulverized. Gets pulverized. And it's beautiful because we're able to kind of carefully craft and hone each ingredient to its own tolerance. Not everything needs to be broken down as far. Some things we don't break down at all because it breaks down naturally in the soil quickly. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to mill the harder to release products yeah. so that they let go earlier in the phase to match things like alfalfa that are gonna break down really quickly because microbes are gonna just eat into that cellulose and release all that tricant and all those health awesome hormones and things Super, like that. Yeah. But we want those pieces of alfalfa bigger so they take a little longer to release to match that release rate. We don't need to turn it into talcum powder. No, we you just, don't. We just want it to be, you know, as consistent as possible. Yeah, and once you've broken that material down, now you do the blending with the other elements in the ribbon blender behind you. It's not necessarily a ribbon blender, but it's basically yeah. a big cement mixer. It's got some large fins inside of it that really toss the material around. I'll bring this up to vertical. Yeah. And uh, I'll suspend the toad above it, unleash it, let it drop into the mixer, toss it around for 15 minutes, and then it will exit, drop into thing two, our hopper, our second hopper. Yep. And this feeds up to our AMS bagging line, and we're producing one bag at a time, and computer inside of it corrects itself. It knows whenever it's under, and it knows when it's over. It has a built-in scale yep. um, right up here. This whole head right here floats. So this is the scale. It's super, super sensitive. Yeah. There's a detector at the top. This unit right here is a level detector. So when we are running, you'll hear the machine, they'll start talking to each other. There it goes. There you go. Yeah. So it's this machine is telling this machine, send I want me more. some more. Send I me want some more. more. Yeah. So it feels complete. Super cool. Tested. Make sure the weight's good. 5.05 right there, man. Right on the, the money. money. Every time. I mean, Beautiful. once I get it filled, I can just set it on here. And this runs at about 180 degrees Celsius, and it seals the bag. We don't we don't zip seal it. We just do a, a heat seal on it. Yep. And, um, and it's ready to go. Now it's yep. ready to be boxed. This is the first sample come off of the 741 pound batch. So this is all the components in, and that's that's all ready to it's go. That's, that's all the inputs I mean, put in it there. It really is. It's broken down a lot. Yeah. And one of the more kind of nuanced pieces of all this milling process is it creates a more homogenous product in the package. When you have blended amendments that you throw on a pallet, throw on a truck, you ship settling. all over, it settles and it separates. And yeah. so you have all this stuff on top, all this yeah. stuff in the middle, and all this stuff on the bottom. And sure, you shake it up but you're not guaranteed that consistent mix and release. Time so and like time again. your yeah. first scoop out of the box is different than your last scoop. And that was one of the main hurdles we were trying to overcome when we moved towards micronizing the product and all of the breakdown benefits came along with it. And that's when we started being a little more particular about what got milled to what ratio. Now this is about an hour away from our headquarters. It's beautiful up here. Yeah, this is Pacific Northwest. This is, this is what it's all about. This is why we are where we are. We can live anywhere in the world. We can choose to live anywhere we want. We love living here. I agree. First kayaks ever in this lake, probably ever. I would hazard a guess and say first human beings on this lake. I mean, this is a glacial fed lake. We're up here to demonstrate how beautiful and how clean our water is and the environment that we have and care and protect. Every little bit of green planet nutrients encompasses this. The purest, cleanest water, the, the highest quality source nutrients. We care very much about ensuring that your plants can get the best nutrition possible. All the water that we get comes from lakes and glaciers like this. One major advantage we have over every other nutrient manufacturer globally. I think green plants can have a major role in the future of the industry. We're innovators, we create new products every day, and we'll be at the forefront of the movement. We're quality focused, we're result based. You have to make sure that the end user has a positive experience every single time 
They use a green flat product. You know, it's not very often you see marketing on the side of a greenhouse, but you've got all the companies that you're aligned with. Obviously, Growspan, the greenhouse manufacturer, Royal Gold, and right in the middle of this Royal Gold picture, you got Don Carlos. Yeah, this is Don Carlos' room. Uncle Don comes and works here. He actually planted these plants. Once people realize what is involved in gardening and taking care of plants like this and plants that's medicine, mm -hmm. it's almost like a, a meditation thing. You know, it's, it's, it's really stress relieving. It's so. therapy. So yeah, so for Don, he comes and he gives us an inspiration and um, you know, he, he gives us new strains that he's you know, been gifted and different things and we just love having him around and all the things that it helps with and you know, we've, we've always loved reggae here in Humboldt, reggae on the river, Don's no question, played right? at a, many of those. Those are life-changing events for people and people who know and that we're available, we actually got to go to those things. It's, it's something special in our heart and a part of our community too. Just the ideals of the Rastafarian culture and the natural ITAL way of life and the way, you know, someone who's been cultivating and consuming cannabis for over like 50 years, Don is just, he's a, you know, he, he really inspires us. And it's a different kind of, uh, it's not really an endorsement or anything like that. He actually really is a part of our team, a part of our family. Amazing. Yeah, it's something that when they came to us and were like, hey, you guys want to get involved in this project, it was super, it resonated really hard with us because Don Carlos is a reggae legend from the early days, like Bob Marley, early reggae legend days. He was involved in Black Uhuru and a lot of other projects that were very influential to me, to a lot of the people at Royal Gold and us getting into cannabis and getting into soils. And it's a part of our story. And when, you know, Brian was like, hey, Uncle Don is looking for people that want to be involved. Are you guys interested? He loves what you do already. We were so honored. It was an easy yes. It was, we don't normally get involved at this level in sponsorships with grows and musicians because you know, it's just a different lane, but this was so true to heart and so true to our story and matching what Brian does, what yeah. Don does. It was, it was a no brainer. It, it really Super warms cool. my heart to be involved. So these are special strains that Don has chosen after we hunt and then we plant his stuff. Well, the plants look much more dense here. The internal spacing is much tighter. They're building some chunk, which is really looking good. And uh, it looks like you just finished stripping all the plants. Yep. You can see the difference in the soil here too. Definitely not as wet because it doesn't have the drip yep. tape. But when we water here, we water a little more water with lower PPM. Okay. And that gets us our nice dry back with this more porous soil. And then it gets hand watered. So as we hand water, we take care of these and this one really gets the yeah. most care that we can. So you're doing more of a flood in this higher porosity soil? A little bit, yes. Yeah, okay. uh, a flood with making sure that it, it dries back. So like this time of the day, we still have it really nice and dry, but if you go down, it's wet. Yeah. Really That's exactly what we look for. Yeah, like this wouldn't even need water tomorrow. I would probably let this dry one more day. It'll it'll almost work like a whole cube to where it kind of shrinks in this bed. Fabric Beds made these and they installed a liner on these so that way they don't wick out on the outside and stay wet on the inside. Okay. So that was a really big thing for me with the beds to make sure that that didn't happen as well. So Important. these things kind of work almost like a big, huge, you know, grow down block or a huge cocoa block or anything like that similar. You can really see here the roots just under that surface level oh, of yeah, perlite, highlighting there, right? exactly what you were saying. You know, just right there, those roots are coming up all the way to the surface and look how dry it is right here, but you got moisture, you know, 16th of an inch below, but it prevents fungus gnats, it prevents any, you know, other surface borne pathogens or pests so much more effectively. And that's one reason a lot of people like the tuper in this sort of format, so they can get a harder wet to dry cycle as opposed to when we were looking at the Kings, where it's more of like a constant, well soaked with dry cycles between. So it lives damper from most of its life over and, in the King's Mix and lives drier here in the tube. And what that really does is as it dries out, it's actually getting more oxygen cycles. Correct. So literally as that water hits, 
the native Humboldt earth, it's drawing new oxygen in, and you basically do a flood and that pushes all the stale air out. Yep. So this actually works more like a hydroponic medium style of gardening. With less watering, yes, yeah. that, that's, that's the trade-off. And we're trying to figure out what we like better for our crop steering methods right now. And also the biggest thing is time. We've got yeah. more people hand taking care of these plants, but at the same time, that's kind of what you're gonna get with a smaller batch, the craft cannabis, what we're really trying to focus on and keeping the top tier, the best that product that we can put on the market, yeah. whether it's you know mixed light, tier one, tier two, our indoor facilities, anything that we put our hands on, just, you know, we wanna make sure it's the best. One thing that's so nice from the Royal Gold perspective to work with Brian is that ability to trial and error to do the R&D and he's been such a good partner we've worked with him and developing a product that we're going to be announcing really shortly and it's called Imperial Boost yep. it, it's a dry organic PK boost product a 01311 NPK that's to, high to do the same things that like a monopotassium phosphate would do yep. a 05030 fertilizer in an organic format so you can use that in a soluble form you can top dress it and it brings that P and K up when you really need it to steer those nutrients for the flower hardening. You can also use that product early in flower if you've got a stretcher that you don't want to stretch so hard so you can change those NPK values to kind of work within the parameters of the plant. 100%. If you don't want it to stretch, drop that nitrogen a little bit, bring the PK up and you're gonna get a denser canopy so you can Amazing. control within reason your crop in that way. So Brian's been a great partner in allowing us to drop some of these things off and just being like, hey, did you like it? What did you like? What didn't you like? Everything Advisors. works great in theory. And then, you know, that's the Real thing. When world. we put it here and it makes more product and the product's danker and, you know, we, we consume our products. So that's, it's gotta be good enough for me. It's gonna be good, you know? As the sun sets on our adventure in Humboldt, We've witnessed the beauty of a perfect day. Waking up to the farm's harmonious sounds, indulging in a farm to table experience, and exploring the captivating world of cannabis cultivation. From the legendary strains of Don Carlos to the innovation of Brian Robinson's beautiful retreat. I really like what we've seen here, and I really appreciate you taking the time to show us your grow. You bet. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys could come to Humboldt and check it out. I appreciate it. Yeah. As we bid a farewell to this extraordinary day, let's remember, it's not just about the cannabis. It's about the culture, the people, and the experiences that make this industry truly special. Until next time, this grow has been exposed. Thanks for joining me. If you ever smoke weed with me, it's like this for me. Because I cool down the smoke and I don't like sharing spit. You don't mind looking ridiculous. I got the little, <laughs> little wax.